Okay, so I just want to say good day and um, thank you guys uh, for creating light uh, for my healing. Uh, for those who don't know, I uh, fell off my bike, uh, slipped in the wet weather and landed right on my kneecap. Uh, I am walking. <laughs> so awkward. That's a walking stick. Yeah, it's pink. So I can stand and I can walk without it, but very, very slowly. So I've got to take it with me everywhere for steps and things. Um, this is just down the road from my house. Uh, I'm getting a bus into town to get some bread uh, before everybody starts panic buying if they haven't already started. Um, yeah, so I need to stock up so that I can stay inside and not have to go out. <laughs> bus stops just up there behind those trees. Yeah, I wanted to show you that um, this is real. Uh, if you're getting any Australian media overseas, um, they have New South Wales is underwater. Uh, west of me, a few suburbs west of me uh, have been evacuated because uh, of the dam, um, Warramanga, War Warramanga Dam or something. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's Sydney's water supply, uh, so it's spilling over, and um, when it spills over, uh, it goes into a valley um, with not much room for the water to flow out of the valley down into the ocean. So that's why the Parramatta River um, is swollen completely. Um, and all these creeks, this goes into the Parramatta River. A couple of months ago, this was almost dried up. There's stepping stones that go across there. I don't know if you can see, there's a bike path that you can just see coming up out of the water over there. Um, that goes all the way along the creek. And as you can see, it doesn't exist anymore down there. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys that it's real and I wanted to see for myself because I live up the hill a little bit and so I'm safe. I'm just out of the evacuation zone. Um, but yeah, uh, houses have been uh, floating down swollen rivers up north uh, Port Macquarie, where I grew up, is underwater. Tari, Kempsey, all that area. Um, and that got devastated like most of New S eastern New South Wales. Um, most of New South Wales last year um, got devastated from the fires. So now everything's collapsing from the water. So that's the update. Um, I just wanted you guys to know that I'm safe, I'm recovering quite well. Uh, I have my ups and downs, but I'm on the mend. Um, and that uh, what mainstream is reporting, um, they are loving reporting this. Uh, just had to put that in there. <laughs> um, is real. So, yeah. Okie doke. Uh, Got to go get this bus. All right. Be safe, guys, wherever you are. Peace and light. See yous. The mid-north coast has been declared a natural disaster zone, with the flooding there now labelled a once-in-a-century event. While the declaration will mean compensation flows much faster, there is a dire warning tonight that more treacherous weather is on the way. A winch from an RFS helicopter, the only way out for stranded and desperate residents in Colodong near Taree. The surging waters at Port Macquarie breaking hearts. Hell. This is what's left of the iconic whalebone restaurant. From furniture to food, everything is ruined. 30 staff out of work, half a million dollars damage with no insurance. Because I recently did a renovation. Um, I spent 300000 on the kitchen, just alone. 
now ranked a once in a century flood event. The Weather Bureau is warning the next two days could see up to four times the March monthly rainfall. You have already experienced some very dangerous conditions and they are going to be treacherous yet again. The last two days have been hard enough and emotions are catching up. I'm sad. <laughs> Tracia and Peter owned the home, ripped off its foundations and sent floating down the Manning River. It just lifted off its footings and went, went off down the, the hill. But it's the cattle that were washed off their paddock which really hurts. They all got washed away. 192. 192 animals, big and small. While some cattle are barely keeping their heads above water, locals are doing everything they can to rescue livestock wherever they are. Some taking shelter on the veranda. Come back. Back away from the gate. Helping round them up is Joshua Edge. He was living in the house that floated away. Everything Sarah and I worked hard for our whole lives was there. Like we've just lost everything right down to my, my baby photos. He was supposed to get married yesterday, but he still can't get to his fiance, who's trapped in Taree. She's amazing. She's like she's the love of my life. I love her dearly. Miss you and I can't wait, you know, to see you and give you a big hug and a kiss. For those whose homes haven't been completely destroyed or washed away down the river, this is the kind of scene that they'll be faced with when they're able to return. A clean-up that could take months. I just pinch myself to sort of try and wake myself up from this nightmare. Now, this should give you some indication of just how powerful and damaging these floodwaters have been. That's the Manning River just there, and at its height, it took all these trees and debris into this person's pool. If we have a look here at this clothesline, that was completely submerged yesterday morning, and this person's house, who we are standing on, you can see the water line just here, which is several metres above where it is now. They're still not out of the woods, but a massive clean-up ahead. Now, I can also tell you that uh, dozens of schools in the mid-north coast will be closed tomorrow. Best to check with the education department about which they are. Um, I can also tell you uh, that there is sadly no update on that missing bodyboarder who uh, disappeared in the waves at Park Beach at Coffs Harbour yesterday afternoon. Mark. OK, Tom Saker on the mid-north coast. Thank you. It comes with the territory, quite literally, if you live on a floodplain like Windsor. The Hawkesbury is raging at speed and carrying with it debris that was on land before the river surged. The Windsor Bridge was closed. Still, some raced across knowing it might be their last chance before water swallows the lot. I just think it'll be funny if the new bridge goes under because they just built it and it was supposed to be to stop the flood. It is a spectacle for those who have never experienced it. Really weird and I just... Never seen this much water. And for those who have. Of all the floods that I've seen here, this is the fastest flowing that I've seen. This is why prolific rainfall combining with a forced spill upstream from Warragamba, churning out roughly 100 Olympic swimming pools every minute. The dam did spill over the last time five years ago, uh, but obviously when it's a one in 50 year event in terms of the amount of rainfall and the sustained rainfall, it has a huge impact. This is Mel and Blake's first home. Their backyard is flooded, they are salvaging what they can. Comparing it to the 88 flood, um, which hit the top of our garage, um, so we're kind of hoping that we don't get the water into the house at this point. Shane's Park, midway between Windsor and Penrith, is a disaster zone. Rescues were needed here, inflatable boats going up and down streets to pull people from their homes. Oh, I'm so grateful, like so grateful. It, yeah, I was really worried about what I was going to do. Inside the home Lara Pengilly left behind, the water is still rising. Yeah, it's pretty devastating. The SES knows its work is not over. We have at least oh, about 30 odd houses along this street here um, that we're just checking on, make sure everyone's okay. Large swathes of Pitt Town and surrounding areas are also underwater. A police car is too. At Freeman's Reach, officers managed to escape. One man winched off a roof by police and holiday homes at Sackville have submerged while the Nepean is rising rapidly too, anticipating the worst flooding here in half a century. I've lived here for 31 years and I've never ever seen it this high. Those suburbs orbiting Penrith, Emu Plains, Jamison Town are all in danger. Potentially, it could result in between three and 4,000 people being asked to evacuate over the next few days. Disaster relief is now available from the federal government. We are extending the Australian disaster payments 
to those in the affected areas. And help is also coming from interstate. Queensland's SES volunteers are on the way. Rain is continuing to tumble along the New South Wales coastline all the way to the border. It's one of the biggest floods that we're likely to see for a very long time. The Parramatta River is fortunate though, unaffected by Warragamba, the waterline today is lower than yesterday. This is hardly a once in a 100 year flood. The La Nina climate cycle will ensure flooding like this along the Parramatta River happens every few years. But when that historic flood does arrive, critics of the government suggest this specific spot will be a disaster. The Powerhouse Museum will be relocated on the river's banks. In 1988, the waterline peaked at least four metres higher than today. There is the great potential for serious flooding through this area and in particular on the, the museum site. It was a dumb decision in 2014 to put a museum on this site. Picton has largely been spared. Flooding five years ago crippled the southwestern town. This time, sandbagging has not been needed, at least for now. You worry all the time and uh, you put long hours and a lot of time into your business and naturally you don't want it to go underwater. But amid the gloom, some moments of levity. At Windsor, the SES responded urgently to cries for help, discovering their victim was not a person, rather a goat. And if you visited the tram sheds at Glebe today, you might have noted the irony. And where I am right now is probably the most appropriately named road in all of Sydney. This is River Road uh, in Emu Plains. You can see it has essentially become a river. It's the subject of evacuation warnings for west of Penrith. People who are supposed to have evacuated at 4.30 this afternoon. That's 90 minutes ago now. And also evacuation orders for 9.30pm for people west of Jamison Town. Now, it's called River Road because it is adjacent to the Nepean River. You take a, a glance out here, you see just how fast that water is going. Now the problem for the Nepean and also the Hawkesbury area around uh, uh, Windsor and Richmond is that that water is going to keep on flowing as water continues to tumble into Warragamba from that massive catchment area. Robert Ovardi at a saturated Emu Plains, thank you. Let's go to Tom Hartley now at Penrith where an evacuation order is in place. Tom, are locals leaving as requested? Well, Mark, many of them are, but others are choosing to stay put. The SES is here at the moment. They've started to door knock residents right along the street, checking which ones are inundated, which homes are most at risk. You can see a few of them getting around now to see who is in any danger. So there are a total of 19 evacuation orders current across New South Wales with residents in this part of the world told to get out by no later than 9 o'clock because it could be too dangerous after then for authorities to get in. Now, there are many other streets across New South Wales which resemble uh, scenes like this that aren't subject to evacuation orders. The residents in those streets are being told by authorities if you do feel like it is getting unsafe, evacuate while you can, move to higher grounds because as the waters keep rising, so too does the risk factor. Good advice, Tom. Tom Hartley at Penrith.